Live from VMworld 2011, this is theCUBE, creating space for big ideas to grow. From siliconangle.com and wikibon.org, a special spotlight backup and recovery with support from EMC, cloud meets big data. Your host, John Furrier, with special guest, Link Einlander from Lone Star College Systems. And now, here's Dave. Hi everybody, we're back. Dave Vellante live, SiliconANGLE, continuous coverage of VMworld 2011. I'm here with Link Alander, who's the Associate Vice Chancellor at uh, Lone Star College. Link, welcome back to theCUBE. Oh, thanks for having me again. Good to have a, an alum on, and uh, there we go. I think most people here have been on theCUBE before, so we're happy to have you, and, uh, <laughs> so thank Great. you. Um, so we're going to talk about backup. This is a you know, deep dive on backup. It, really, these spotlights are designed to help practitioners like your peers, understand some of the challenges that they might have to go through, maybe give them some advice. And so, let's start with um, a little bit of background. Tell us about Lone Star College and your role there as uh, Vice Chancellor. Okay, um, well the Lone Star College system is the largest community college system in the Houston area, and soon to be the largest in Texas. In fact, actually we're going we're gonna to break another milestone and probably roll past 100,000 students. So, you can imagine that challenge. I mean, students are coming in from 2008, until, uh, until now, we've gone from 63,000 up into the 100,000 range, so it's a challenge. From the IT aspect, we have even more of a challenge. We're facing the ability to meet the current demand of students, to, to have our enterprise systems be able to handle that load, and we're doing that across a distributed environment. We have 1,400 square miles, we now have six campuses online, so it's, it, it's a daunting task to make sure that everything is working at all times. So, in the college system, I provide services from the infrastructure side, but then I also provide the operational supports that's needed at the campus level. So, in the organization, we face a lot of different IT challenges. Everybody does. So, so we love sports analogies uh, here at the Cube. We, we've been called the ESPN of tech. So let's uh, let's break down the uh, the lineup. So tell tell me about your IT environment. What are you guys running? How virtualized are you? Talk a little bit about your apps. Just uh, paint a picture for us. Okay, well, this, this has been the best thing. The best opportunity that you can ever have is the opportunity to rip and replace everything. Total demolition from 2008 to present, and I mean total demolition. So we had the opportunity to, to, to implement a strategy and a plan and execute on that plan. In 18 months, we implemented a whole complete centralized VM environment, a new wide area network structure that can support that environment, and we went from 5% virtualization to our current 93% and we're going to cross 98% and pretty much hold about 98% by the end of this year. So virtualization is king for us. How do I have flexible services? How can I do things differently? So on that lineup right there, that, that's important. The next part is, is how do you take your ERP to the next level? And that's what we did with the virtualization strategy. We virtualized our ERP in order to meet the demand of the students. You know, students are coming in, you have 90,000 plus students come in to register, and they want to they want to check their grades. They want to check this. They want to make sure the classes are right. Where do I have to be? All in a very short window. So by leveraging private cloud, we're now allowed to make it elastic. So we can stretch everything out. We can provide the resources. The student gets the same experience right now at peak as they received when it was slow and they were doing the pre-registration. So so it's enabled a lot of functionality for the for the business side to to bring students on board. So what was the driver for this rip and replace? The best way to put it was uh, our IT systems could not meet what they needed. Uh, the college system was growing and the IT systems were falling behind. So we had a new CIO come on board and immediately we'd, underneath the leadership of him and our chancellor, we basically immediately changed everything. And so the opportunity was there, so the chance to take that opportunity to the max, to change everything, to, to run IT as a business in higher education, which is a lot different. But then also to look at how do we enable innovation in the classroom? How do we provide a core level of service that, that instructors and students are confident with? So, so rather than try to bleed blood from a stone and do patchwork, you said, all right, we're just going to do it right. So uh, where a lot of customers we talk to, uh, they run into a problem with backup after they virtualize. So you anticipated one, is that right? And, and, or anticipated the backup requirements of virtualization and then, and then uh, implemented backup accordingly in advance, proactive. Is Absol that right? Absolutely, fully proactive. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's, it, uh, that's rare. <laughs> no, well, we had, like I said, we had an opportunity. We were told what was going to happen um, and what we needed to accomplish. So as we, we resigned the infrastructure, we were able to look at the infrastructure and say, in a virtualized world, what are the backup solutions we need to implement? 
in the storage, how do we need to manage the storage differently? How can we leverage all these tools? And so we baked off everybody. We looked at every everybody out there and said, who can give me instant recovery? Who can I go, can I trust that this backup is happening, that the data is protected, but that I can also actually meet the objectives of the time, which was five nines. How do I how do I make sure I can ensure that quality? So this was 08 ish. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, 08 was the planning planning phase for three months, centralization reorganization. Then we immediately began redesigning everything by September. Uh, virtualization first by January. New virtualized infrastructure, new data center operations, whole change in practice by that summer. We were 80% virtualized in the first six months of that year. And, but you, you chose to go with a client side dedupe Absolutely. Approach, correct? Yes. Can you talk a little bit about why? Was it the virtualization uh, 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 adoption uh, or other reasons? Well, it was a combination. As we were looking at everything that was out there at the time, one of the challenges we have is our, our colleges are located across 1,400 square miles. So we're pulling data from everywhere. We needed a centralized backup solution that was fast and agile and by doing it at the client side, we're moving small bits of deltas across and we're able to do the exact same on the recovery side. So at the time we were doing the uh, reviews, it really was what is the best in our environment across a large college system with all these small, uh, that, well, not really even small, 100 to 200 servers in a farm out there that are virtualized. How do I get that data protected? How do I bring it back to a central organization? How do I replicate it out to a disaster recovery site? And to move that kind of data, you have to have that. You you have to have a uh, dedupe at the target. It's, everything's got to be deduped. It's got to be fast, and it's got to be instant. So you're pushing less data over the network. Now at the time, um, the integration of backup and VMware was certainly not as mature as, as it is today. You hear, for the last two or three years, you've seen a lot of emphasis on that. Um, I mean, you've made your decision and you're, you're going with it. I don't know how much pay, you, you pay attention to sort of what's happening you know, outside of your little world, but I'd be interested in your opinion. Do you feel like um, the whole industry is just getting better at solving that problem that you were trying to solve, or does client-side DDoop still bring that advantages, even when you have like a change block tracking and some of these other integrations that you're seeing? Well, we're, we're always keeping track of what changes are happening. Uh, oh. We're not going to become stagnant. That's what happened before. We became stagnant, the, uh, the organization was stagnant in IT, and that, that created that failure. So we're constantly looking at different strategies for everything we do, but we're not looking at change, we're looking to validate. And as we've reviewed options, in fact, I just had one sent from somebody recently said, can we do this? I'm like, yes, we can beat that. And it was on backup, it was on recovery. Can I, can I beat their recovery time? They promised me they could do X. I'm like, yeah, that's not a problem. So, so we always go back and review everything we've done. We, we've got to, otherwise you stagnate in the organization, you, know, you just say, oh, I'm comfortable with this. One of the challenges out there is, is that yes, it's matured now. The difference is, is that the maturity was there in our case with Avamar at the time we were going down our virtualization strategy. So while the maturity was there then, they're constantly improving and moving us forward. It's not like they've stagnated it in their design and letting everybody else try to catch up to them. We finally, we finally uh, jumped into the things and as the technologies are changing, we're able to, to, to get all those pieces together at the same time. What, um, what's on the to-do list? I mean, as a customer, what do you, what are you looking for from a from a supplier? What do you need out of uh, let, you know take a take an EMC Avamar? What do you what are you, what are you pushing those guys toward? You know that, that 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 is a pretty tough question to ask right now because when you're at the last time we reviewed everything, we really looked at what is our next strategy in 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 backup. And of course, you know what you hear a lot of is how do I get to a better client side backup? Mm -hmm. How do I take those senior executives, uh, make sure I'm backing up their their laptops without them worrying about it? Right. Um, I would say that's a different strategy for us, but at the same time is we're looking more at cloud lever leveraging cloud type services and virtualization of their, their de desktops. So when we're looking at all these different strategies right now, Avamar fits perfectly with what we're doing. And the biggest thing I look for is constantly getting from them a roadmap, where they're heading next, what, what is the next maturity that's going to happen so I, can, so I can keep my eyes on what's happening in the industry, but also know where they're, they're going at the same time. So that partnership makes a big difference for us. But when it comes down to it is they're delivering exactly what we need. I know I've got backups. I don't have to worry about my backups. Um, you know, tape still exists. Sad to say it does. You have retention and all those things. But, but the reality is if I have to recover anybody's data, I've got it. Have you done a recovery from tape and since you've moved over to this uh no. System? Right. No. Okay. <laughs> if we, we do tapes, we have to, you know, legal requirements, everything else, they're still out there for us. But the reality is if I have a recovery of something like that, 
I'm pulling it right off of the grid. You're, you're, you're pulling it off the grid, uh, and it's, is it typically fresh data? I mean, less than, I don't know, a week or so old? Or, oh, or? Ab absolutely. You, usually when we're trying to, in a recovery situation of anything, we're usually within five to three to five days, I would say, typically. Sometimes it's pretty much the same day that we're dealing with. So whether, whatever, whatever we look at during that process, it could be recover point, you know, it could be the, the snaps, but typically if we have to go to Avamar, we can pull it very quickly. So you're running recover point? Absolutely. How, how do you look at recover point and, and CDP uh, in the context of, of backup? Like where do you help us understand, paint a picture of the, sort of put it into context if you will, the sort of the, 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 the traditional sort of backup that, that I guess Avamar is not traditional backup, but let's put it in that camp. And then okay. this sort of new CDP type of approach with recover point. Where, how do they fit? How should practitioners think about that? To, to us, a product like RecoverPoint was critical for our tier one services. You know, ab absolutely, I need immediate rest restoration. We, we, we measure that on a five nines environment. So RecoverPoint was absolute. Uh, we've, we've got a huge private cloud that transitions and shifts uh, servers back and forth and around in services. So the customer doesn't know where it comes from and they don't care. RecoverPoint allows me to have that agility that if I have a, a major failure, I've got services back immediately. There's no delay, there's no, no hassles, no, nothing happens differently in the organization and the customer does not know. I have had major hardware situations happen. Hardware events you can't prevent. You can only plan to, to, to be able to handle them. And at the same time is because of the strategy of deploying RecoverPoint, um, how we've done it with Avamar, everything else, we're able to mix it. So, so Avamar is ideal uh, in the environment for everything we have, and, and it still does cover, it, it, we, use, we use Avamar, and then we tape that off to Networker for, for file retention. And in addition, you'll put Re RecoverPoint CDP on top of on top that of Avamar what? layer. So you, you layer Avamar across the entire application portfolio, and tape. I Not tape across everything, only but what I have to retain. Only ta tape <laughs> based on the, That's a good the, expense the organizational still. edict. Yes. Okay, and then the CDP you target based on the value of the application. Absolutely. Okay. If, if, if it's a five nines application, I've got to have that. I've got to have that ability. I've got to have that instant recovery. I, can't, I don't have that time. You've got six minutes. That's it. Do you do a, a business impact analysis? Absolutely. On a regular basis, you do, even for your backup. And we report we report metrics out back to our board of trustees. Uh, we measure ourselves. We have strict KPIs, um, and that's exactly how I'm evaluated. So, <laughs> I mean, that's important. Is we run it like it's a business. We 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 are a support. Instructions the mission. It's a big difference. This notion of a backup window has uh, held us hostage in this industry for a while. Talk a little bit about uh, your your backup window and have, have you been able to essentially eliminate that that gun to your head I we smashed our backup window uh, let's see I guess that would have been somewhere right around February 2009 2000 right after you implemented this backup window yeah. is not something that holds you hostage anymore we have we have one legacy system that we're still running because we're still transmitting you know bringing data out of our old ERP and yes, we still have a little bit out of that, but that's all. Link, uh, I got to go, getting the hook here. I uh, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. We got a, a great panel coming up. Uh, Link Alander, Lone Star College, great to have you back on. Enjoyed it. My pleasure.